through the first quarter of the class, which which we're through today, right? Today's the four, end of the fourth week. Is that yeah. correct? Does that even seem possible? <laughs> well, we did have the half week. We did have the half week, right? Right, but through so far through this class, really, um, there, there's been there, there's been three main things that that we we covered. All right, and um, the quiz will be next week, by the way, not this week. All right. Um, the three things that we covered are number one, we did some Java review. All right, just. Um, Given that it's similar to C sharp, and you all have done some C sharp, um, we may not have done everything quite so extensively, but again, it's similar. Um, so we did some Java review. Make sure that you're up on object-oriented concepts and uh, basic Java coding. Um, the other thing we did is we introduced you to the components in an Android application. Um, Software now is developed, you know, a lot differently than, than when I first started. When I first started, you had one big thing called a program, you know, and that was it. Everything was in there. Now you have components that handle different things, and that's, you know, it's a double-edged sword. The uh, benefits of it is that each, each component, if you will, on its own is pretty simple and straightforward. So instead of having one gigantic uh, program that was monolithic and, and, and gargantuan. We have uh, a bunch of little components that all work together to solve the problem. So each individual component is going to be complicated, but there's going to be a lot of them, and they're all going to be different. And the third thing that we covered is how they talk to each other, because that's sort of the that's sort of the rub. We can look at any of the components, and it's pretty straightforward. But then, how does this link to that, and this link to that, and, and so on. Um, that's really uh, the, the complexity. So really, that's sort of the purpose of, of, of this, and that, that's where I want, want us to be. Um, last time we were looking at a uh, tip calculator, a more involved tip calculator than the one that, um, that, that we showed you in a previous week. And again, in it, we're reviewing the different components and how those components talk to each other. So let's take a look. Just to refresh our memory. The manifest we're not really going to talk about today. The manifest we have um, we've seen in previous classes, and there's nothing really exciting in this application's manifest. When uh, we get into applications that require permissions, that's when we might see something that is exciting in the manifests. The one set of components that we're also not going to talk much about today are the three uh, sets of images. Again, we described the, the purpose of those relating to the different density pixels to keep things a consistent size regardless of the density. All right. The three that we are going to look at, again, just to review and to review how things point together, we're going to review the strings XML file, the layout XML file, and finally the uh, actual Java class for the activity. Strings XML file, if you recall, allows us to define in one place, a list of the hard-coded strings that we'll be using throughout the application. And really, that's a maintainability issue. Um, it's, make, it's a maintainability issue uh, in the sense that if you want to change the verbiage, there's only one place to change it. It's also a maintainability, maintainability issue when it comes to internationalizing or, or localizing your application. Because then all the strings are in one place. You can create a second version of this file to work in another language. And, and we may see an example of that towards the end of class today. We may go and make a French 
uh, version of this application depending on how, uh, how the time goes. All right. So you notice these, pretty straightforward, is simply an XML file. <clears throat> the main node is the resources, the root node, and there's a series of strings that have names associated with them. Now that name, if we're talking about it, if we're focusing on how the, the names of, or, or how these components link together, the name is used in the XML file, and it's also used in the coding file to point to those different strings. So for example, this text that says bill total, we get it from at string bill total. So in other words, it pulls it from the string in the string file called bill total. So bill total for the meal in question. So that, if you will, is the hook between the string file and the XML file. Right. And the hook is, again, that those nodes are named, and we use that name um, in the XML file to, to point to the particular string. So that, that's the hook. That, that's the glue that holds these two together. All right. Now let's look at the um, Java class itself for the activity and look for the uh, glue that holds these guys together. I don't know if this one touches a string file. I guess it's possible it could. Um, I don't think it does. But this definitely needs to talk to the screen layout file, the screen layout XML file. And there's two things, there's two kinds of things that do this. <clears throat> the first one is to set the content view. Set content view is what goes and says for this activity, this is our main view. All right. So this links the, con the, the, the view, the content view that's in that layout XML file with this particular activity, with this particular Java object. So here we're saying set content view, our layout main. So in the resources, we're looking for the layout. In the resources, we're looking for the layout and we're looking for main XML. So that creates an actual physical screen based on that layout. Notice they use the word inflate. Um, it, it's a good word, it's pretty descriptive. Um, essentially, there, you, know, you, you could think of it almost like dehydrated too and bringing it to life, adding water to it. All right. Because really what we're doing in this instruction is we have the layout in the XML file. But that isn't the actual objects. That's just a description of what objects are going to be created. By inflating that layout, we're actually going and we're making those objects. So that's what sort of brings that main XML file to life. All right, this line here. And again, the terminology that they use that's pretty consistent is inflating the XML file. We'll see examples of this in, in, in other uh, you know, in other sample applications. Uh, I mean, examples beyond this sort of thing, all right? This you're going to see in, in every application. Every application is going to have uh, an activity and that's going to be associated with uh, a content view, a main content view. So we're always going to be inflating that main XML file to create the view for this activity. But we may do that for other components on the screen as well. So we'll be inflating a number of things in here. All right. So what this does, again, is this brings to life the layout that's in that main XML file, and it actually goes and creates those objects. All right. However, that's not all we need to do to hook our activity to that layout that view. Therefore, we're going to have a series of statements that look like this that allow us to point to the individual components on the view. And these are very important. We spent a fair amount of time talking about these kinds of instructions last time. And all of these look similar, 
all these look similar. And essentially what we're doing is we're asking the view to find the thing that has a certain ID. All right? In this case, we're looking for the thing that has an ID of R ID tip 10 edit text. Now, that ID corresponds to this one. If you notice the syntax here, there's an at plus. And effectively what that means is when you create this object, create the object and give it an ID of ID tip 10 edit text. Alright? So that's what the plus sort of means. When you create it, create it and add to the resources the ID of tip 10 edit text to point to this object. Now, then, again, as we saw in our code, we use that ID and find the thing on the layout that has that ID, and we cast it to an edit text. In other words, since we know it's an edit text, we cast it as an edit text. That way we can treat it like an edit text, all right? So I said before uh, in class last time, that view could be anything on the page, all right? We know it's an edit text, though, so we cast it that way because we want to treat it that way. And as it turns out not to be that, we're going to get an error, either a compile error or a runtime error, depending on the exact nature of the error. So now... We've sort of brought everything together, right? The main file uses the strings, the main XML for the layout uses the strings to set the sum of the labels, all right? Actually, this could do that as well. I don't think in this particular example we do, but in other examples we could do the same thing uh, within the uh, activity. The activity is tied to the layout XML by first inflating it up here, and then creating references to all the different things on that layout. So now we can program uh, with that interface because with that we created those objects and we're pointing to them. So now we can access and we can manipulate them. All right. Questions at this point. Interesting enough, if we look in this gen, which is generated files. You will see an r.java, which contains all those different little pointers for all those IDs that are going to get created and strings. We obviously don't want to mess with this because this is auto-generated, and if we do, we're going to mess it up, but this sort of helps with the process that I just described. Now, we have one more sort of linking to do, all right, to make this work. We have the components talking to each other. We now have to link the user activity, the user actions, the user events with the code that we want to process that. And that's what we're going to spend probably the most of today talking about. So, in other words, here we have the application. Here we have the application. We go into that edit text and enter a value. The code gets triggered to go and do all those calculations. All right. We have, so we have somewhere in our activity the code to do those calculations. We have to link the user action associated with entering a value into that text box with going and doing those calculations. In a similar fashion, we have to link the changing of the slider 
to going and doing these two calculations of the custom tip amount. So there's code to do both of these things. We simply have to hook it into and connect it to the activities or rather the events associated with those different controls. And this is how we do it. If we look here, we, we do it in sort of two places. Here's one. Oops. And here's one. Bill edit text. What is bill edit text? Well, it's this text box. The text box that we are entering the money in. The, the, the amount of the, uh, the meal in money in. Alright, so we pointed to that. We're adding to that text box a listener. Alright? Remember, in, in general terms, what's a listener? And a listener would be equivalent to, I think the terminology they'd use in a .NET platform would be an event handler. Alright? In other words, we're associating some code with some event on that control. Alright? I think we saw an example last time of doing it with a button. We associated a click listener so that when the user clicked on the button, it went and executed our code. Here we're associating it with a different event, and that is the event of the text changed. Now here's where it's important that we casted this object to an edit text, right? Because not every view on, a, on the screen is going to have a text changed event. A button doesn't have a text changed event. You don't change the text on buttons. At least the user doesn't change the event on, or doesn't change the text on uh, a button. All right. So there would be no add edit. What is that? Add text change listener method on a button. But there is one to an edit text. All right. That is the event. Uh, associated, that is an event associated with an edit text control. So, we're doing this a little bit different than we did in the last example. In the last example, if you remember, we had a monstrosity of an instruction inside those parentheses, which actually created what's called an anonymous class, all right, and created an object that did the handling of the click event. Here what we're saying is that we want to make the listener for the change text event on this text box be this bill edit text watcher class. And if we look down here, Somewhere. Here is the creation of that object. It's a text watcher. What is a text watcher? A text watcher is a class that's meant to handle events associated with an edit text control. So we create our new text watcher called Bill Text Watcher, or Bill Edit Text Watcher, and associated with that text box, and we define associated with this an on text change method. All right? So, in other words, what code gets execute when we what code gets executed when we change the text? Well, whatever the listener is for that edit text uh, view. All right. In this case, it's Bill Edit Text Watcher. We execute on that object the on text changed event. 
So in other words, this code right here is the event handler. We set that event handler up here. Where we said, hey, add to that text box the text change listeners to be sitting there waiting for that text to change. And when that text does change, we execute this. Notice that the code in the event handler is thin. There's not a lot of code there. There's really just a try catch, and it calls a method, and then it calls a couple other functions. Generally speaking, you don't want to have a lot of intensive code in your event handler. Your event handler code should sort of just be a boss function. That is, it should call other functions and let them do their thing but it really shouldn't do a lot of processing on its own. So notice in this case, what are we doing on the text changed? We call, or we grab the current uh, bill total from the value of that text box. What's the value of the text box? The value of the text box gets passed into this function as the argument s. So you notice associated with every event are a list of arguments. And those arguments tell you something about the event that just happened. In this case, the argument s tells us the value of the string that has just been entered into that text box, the new value. All right. And we try to convert that to a double. And if that works, we continue on and do the calculation. If that doesn't work, we set the bill total to zero. Now here's an interesting thing. This is very good, thorough code. The interface is set up such that we can only put numbers in here. We can't put letters or anything in here. All right. But despite that, they still do a try-catch to make sure that that's a valid number. And that's probably a good practice to do. You know, that's kind of like you know, wearing a bell and suspenders at the same time. Right? It's doing both those things. Uh, it's, this, is gonna, this, this code is going to make sure there's no um, invalid amount centered in. All right? In the XML file, we specified you can only enter numbers in here. But we're checking it here anyhow, because this is a different component. And we could always change the XML file and get some bogus stuff in there. So even if we do that, it's not going to make our code blow up. We're making the code as robust as possible by checking that. Is everyone clear what this value S is? What this argument S is? That represents the new value in the edit text. How do I know that? Well, because on the on text change event, the first argument that gets passed to this is S, which is a character sequence, which represents the characters that have just been entered into the text box. Once we've ensured that that is a number, we then call two methods, update standard and update custom. Because if we change the value up here, we want to change both the standard rates for a tip and the custom rates for a tip down here. So update standard does these, update custom does those two at the bottom. Again. Excuse me. Notice that the processing code to do the actual calculation isn't in the event. It's good to keep the events thin. All right? 
The event shouldn't do the work themselves. The, 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 uh, the event logic is just sort of the coordinator. All right? Yeah, it's going to make sure that the data is, is OK, but then it's going to allocate, or delegate, rather, to these other methods the actual calculation. And that's what update standard and update custom does. If we look at those then, this is the kind of code that you would be used to seeing in any language. Update standard simply takes the current bill total, which we've just set, multiplies it by 10% and calculates the total bill based on the bill plus the 10% tip. Then we set the box on our table for the 10% tip. And we set the total. So we've now calculated the tip and the total for 10%. We do the same for 15% and 20%. Notice how here we're using those variables that we defined up here, right? We said tip 10 edit text dot set text equals, what is tip 10 edit text? Well, that's that pointer that we created up here. Remember one of the first things that we did in this, in the onCreate uh, method, is that we pointed to all the things that we need to access and change. All right. So we pointed to this box for the 10% tip. Here, we're then storing the value that we've calculated in that edit text box. All right. So again, in the onCreate event, we grab all these pointers. Why do we grab the pointers? We grab the pointers because we need to access and manipulate those things. And by the same token, we do the same thing for the rest of the boxes in the table. The 10% total, the 15% tip, the 15% total, the 20% tip, and the 20% total. We also call update custom which goes in and calculates the custom tip based on the slider. We'll look at that in more detail in a second, how the whole slider update works. Questions about this? Okay. Now, what we've done, what we've explained so far in this application is how, when the user types in a value here, this table gets updated. In a nutshell, it gets updated this way. We grab pointers to all of these different edit texts. We associate with this text, this edit text, a listener. And what's a listener? A listener is an event handler. So we associate with this text box some code that says, when this text box changes, I want to do something. What does that code do? It grabs a value that was entered in that text box, and it calls functions to go and do the calculation. What does that calculation do? Well, it takes that amount, does the calculations based on 10%, 15%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20